What's going on everyone? Welcome to another video. Today I want to talk about a couple ways that you can actually start to make some money as a developer slash coder slash programmer, whatever it is you do. There are a couple ways that all of us can go out and make some side money and potentially make it a full-time income if that's what you want to do. Most of these things that I'm about to talk about today are going to be mainly prioritized towards side income and not so much generating a lot of full-time income. The first way that you can actually start to make some money with code right now, and I've talked about this in the past in some previous videos, and I will link those above if you want to check those videos out. But the first way to get some money is to become a freelance worker. There's a couple different avenues that you can take within freelancing in order to actually generate some income and get some clients. So you can actually go around what in whatever city you live in and look up some local businesses through that list of local businesses, check out their website. If their website doesn't look that great, message them and see if they would like to have their website redone, whether it be for free or for some actual money, then you can actually offer that up and start to talk through that. I've said this in the past video where I was talking about a couple ways that you can actually be productive when you're just not feeling it. There is a link to a amazing program that I've actually taken. He's written a book as well that I've read from Kyle Prinsloo, who also goes by study web development on Twitter and Instagram. You can go to that link below and check out some of the stuff he has. He has an amazing program for you to get started as a freelancer. He comes up with different ways for you to go about getting clients. He has a couple templates for you to go off of as far as making the actual website, T templates for contracts and a couple templates for emails and things like that. So it has great resources and great starter templates for you to actually get moving fast as a freelancer in terms of making websites. Other avenues you can take with freelancing is going to be sites like Upwork and Fiverr where you can kind of find projects where people need developers or coders to make a website or make an application. Whatever it is, you can kind of pick up those projects. I personally haven't used them, but I know that some people have benefited from them and have made some money from them. They don't pay as much as if you were to go out and actually get clients yourself because you can charge your rates accordingly however you want to and that's kind of like the downside to sites like Upwork or Fiverr but they are out there if you want to start small if you want to start building up your clientele they can definitely work for you and benefit you in it in any way they're just for me personally I haven't used them all you really need to know as far as technologies for freelancing is going to be HTML and CSS you will possibly need to know a little bit of JavaScript and probably Git as well for version controlling the site when you're maintaining it, adding in new features, and then also if you're going to use GitHub pages or Netlify to use to host the site, knowing Git is going to be helpful for you in order to make sure that those changes you make, whatever it is with new feature, change the color, like those changes get pushed out into the master branch and into production. Some of the nice things that come with freelancing and you know the benefits that I love the most is that you get to set your own schedule. You get to work with whoever you want to. So you literally choose your clients. You can reject clients, accept whoever you want. You can charge your own rates. So you can you know figure out what a one-time payment looks like for you depending on who you're working with and what the company is doing. Or you can charge a subscription-based like monthly fee for maintaining a website and you know, constantly working for a company, signing them on to a couple of deals or whatever it is. Like you're very flexible. You can work whenever you want, wherever you want. Being a freelancer is probably my top way in order to get some income because it's one, you can choose how much you want to work. So you can, you know, make some small amounts of money. You don't have to go out and get like a lot of clients or you can go all in into being a freelancer and get as many clients as you can possibly tack on by yourself and make a good amount of money to live off of depending on where you're at and how much rent is for you and all that stuff. The second way to make some money as a coder slash developer is going to be blogging. The nice thing about blogging is you're literally just talking about you know, what it is you're learning and bringing people on for your personal journey as a developer. Literally, you're just documenting your life and what it is you're learning. Not only does this help you, but this also helps other people, you know, kind of understand some concepts in the same things that they're learning. If they're learning HTML at the same time as you, you may be talking about something specific in HTML they just couldn't understand. And the way that you worded it is now helping them. And in turn, this is how you're able to monetize your content. Once you kind of find your style, your niche, and the way you're going to to produce your content, where you're gonna put it, 
that's when you can start to get into some of the couple ways you can monetize your blog. And some of those ways are gonna be things like Google AdSense. You can easily get into the program and start generating some passive income through Google AdSense. You can sell products that you make. So if you make merch or if you're selling a course or a book, you can promote it there. Or you can do some affiliate marketing where you're on Amazon Associates and you can now put product links in your blog posts or you know be a part of someone else's affiliate marketing program where they're selling a course you send them over there and you convert you start to convert people that's how you can start to generate a little bit of income now the one thing i will say is that this does require a little bit of traffic and a lot of work up front for you to be able to start generating some income google adsense aside right you can generate some income with very little traffic, but if you're gonna do things like the affiliate marketing or selling your product, you're not gonna see a substantial amount of income if you don't have a big amount of audience. So I would recommend you know, going on Instagram or Twitter and starting to build an audience there and then generating an audience there is then an avenue where you can start to leverage that audience and push them over to your blog. So that's gonna be some of my tips there in order to generate some traffic in order to get some income through a blog post. So those are just some things to keep in mind when it comes to blog you know, it does require a little bit of work up front for you to actually generate some income from it. Don't expect this thing to just pop off out of nowhere, right? No one's gonna read a blog that they don't even know about. So make sure you have an audience to broadcast this blog to. The third way that you can start to generate some income as a developer is going to be starting your own podcast. If writing really isn't your thing and you kind of like to talk a lot like I do, then starting a podcast is gonna be right up your alley. You can do the same things that a blogger does, but now you're doing it in voice form rather than written form. And it does not require a lot of equipment to get started. Literally, you can just grab your phone and just get started there. There's a bunch of platforms for you to go out and literally just go on to, to record yourself, post your episode out and get it published onto services like Apple Podcasts or Spotify. I personally use anchor.fm as my hosting service for my podcast that I run. If you guys haven't checked that out, you can check the link below or go on Spotify and look up the Chow Codes podcast and I go on there and I just talk about anything coding related, anything life related, and just talk about general stuff. I do also bring on other developers from within the community to interview them in a sense and see how they got brought up in their journey and what they did and what other things they can do and say to help you out there if you're a junior dev or you're looking to get into this space, how they can help you and bring some value to you in order to kind of make your journey interesting and help you along the way when you're going to get that job or going to be a freelancer, whatever it is. That podcast is intended to bring you value. Like I said, starting a podcast is super easy. And if your passion is coding and you like to talk, extrovert, introverted aside, I'm very introverted myself, but I find it being very natural for me to like public speak and just talk. So a podcast for me was a great medium to express kind of what I was learning and what I'm doing and help those that I actually care about, which is pretty much everybody in the developer community. I want to be able to spread some value to you and help you on your journey. So starting that podcast is going to be a great avenue for you. Like I mentioned, anchor.fm has a great platform that you can start your podcast on. Very simple. They do everything for you. They put your podcast on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, all every podcast platform you can even think of, some that I didn't even know existed. They also, so when it comes to monetization, bring out sponsors for you. So they actually look for sponsors for you to do some ad reads for. Once you get some sponsors, then you can actually put in ad reads. So when you upload an episode, you have the option of putting in your ad reads before, in the middle, or after your episode. So that way, you know, when you get listens, they'll listen to the sponsor and then you'll generate some revenue based off of listens, which is really, really nice. Now, same thing as blogging. This does require a bit of traffic for you to do. This will require knowledge from you for content to talk about and then generating traffic and leading them over to your podcast. Without the audience, you get no money. So make sure that you have some sort of personal brand behind you. You know, like I said, on Instagram or Twitter, for me, it was Instagram that I can start to generate my audience and lead them towards the different avenues that I have, such as YouTube, the podcast. I don't have a blog, but maybe I'll have a blog soon, who knows, but I have a leverage point where I can kind of direct people where they want to go. So make sure you have some audience and a little bit of traffic so you can start to get some listens on your podcast. The fourth way that you can generate some income is going to be selling a course. This is a great way if you
you are a person that one, likes to talk, two, likes to make content, three, loves to teach people and knows what they're doing, this is gonna be a great medium for you and actually is one of the ways that you can generate not only just side money, but you can actually turn this into a full-time gig if you sell a lot, right? Like this is just one of those things where you create a course, teach people. People in the dev community wanna learn. Like that's one of the things that a lot of us come up doing. We we want an online course where someone is teaching it in a clear and concise way. If you're able to do that very well and it converts well, it just sits there and it keeps generating money, right? Like you can use platforms like Udemy, which is very popular in the, in the dev community and it's one that I personally use all the time. You can create a course, stick it on Udemy and it's done. They'll do the rest for you. They'll generate all the income, send it your way. Obviously, they'll probably take a cut knowing it's their platform. If you don't like that, then you can always, you know, host your own platform or go on Gumroad or something and then host it there. Again, gonna require an audience for you to market this out towards. A lot of this is going to be marketing. At the end of the day, you can create a product, but if there is no marketing behind it, no one is going to know about it. So make sure that when you are thinking about some of these avenues to try and generate some income as a developer, even if it's on the side, you need to have people that know about you and want to actually like support you and learn from you. So with the course, yes, it's going to help a lot of people, make sure you market it well so that once you post it up or before you post it up, hype it up a little bit, get some people excited for it, make sure people are expecting a little bit of value from it, tease them a little bit, post it out and let the money rain in. Like I said previously at the beginning of this section, this is going to require a little bit of knowledge in terms of whatever it is you're teaching. You, you can know HTML, CSS, and JavaScript if you know it well, great, teach it. This is going to require a little bit of patience, a lot of time, a lot of video editing. You're gonna to need to know how to video edit, whether it be on Final Cut Pro, Premiere Pro, whatever it is, right? You're gonna have a lot of screen caps, a lot of errors, so make sure that you know these things or learn how to do them while you're making your first course. That way, when you branch out and start to make more and more courses, you just get that much better and better and better. So understand those are some of the skills that you'll need to have in order to make a course. The fifth and final way in this video for you guys to make money as a developer is going to be building an app or as they call it, software as a service. If you've ever had an idea for an app where it actually solves an issue that you know a lot of people have in a community or in an industry, or you or your friends have an issue with or a problem that you can't really solve and it's solvable through software, that's where you come in and you can actually build a software to fix and solve that issue, do it well, you can sell it and it's gonna make a bunch of money because if it solves a big enough problem where you can you know, automate a process, you know, solve a big enough problem to where people actually benefit from, that's the selling point and that's where people are gonna really, really pay for this thing and that's where you can make a good amount of money. Software as a service can be sold through a couple different models so you can always go the subscription route where people are paying a monthly fee or a one-time annual fee to have a subscription to your service or software and then they can even go the licensing route where there's a licensing fee that people will need to pay in order to use a software or the third one which is kind of like bigger in my opinion is people do a one-time payment for a fixed amount so kind of like going on the app store people will look at an app let's say it's one dollar and 99 cents they'll click it pay that 199 and they can use that app however they want. You can decide however way you wanna go depending on your business model, but this is something important for you to think about when you're wanting to sell this thing because those do make or break some apps. In my opinion, you know, like deciding what model you wanna go with as far as how to sell it is going to, in a consumer's mind, say, oh, I don't know if I wanna pay this much for a month or I don't know if I wanna pay this fixed amount one time, like it seems expensive. So kind of see where you're at, depending on your pricing, what model you wanna go with, and just think about that while you're developing this app. This right here is probably gonna be one of the most time consuming parts of you know, generating income on the side. This, I mean, this is a huge side project potentially, right? Depending on what problem you're trying to fix, but this is going to require one, a lot of time, to a lot of patience, so same thing as video editing and all that, but this also is gonna require a huge amount of marketing. Again, no one is going to pay for an app they don't know about, so this is very important and I'm going to talk about this a little bit more. Marketing is going to be a huge part of all these different avenues of income because without it, no one's gonna really know about you, so this is why I like to preach personal branding. This is why I like to preach you know, building an audience. You need to have that audience behind you in your corner to be able to direct people to a product that you sell. If people don't know about you, they're not going to think you're credible enough. Like if I see an app and it's from someone that I don't know, there's no credibility to his name. I have no idea what this app is for. Like 
There's there's nothing. There's no I can't I can't support that because I don't know and I don't trust that person. If someone I know on Instagram, if someone I know on Twitter builds something, there's some credibility to that. I know that person. I know how genuine he or she is. I know what they do and I can support whatever product they're promoting right now. So I will actually go out and I have more of an incentive to go do that. So make sure while you're thinking about going these different avenues, you're going out and building an audience, whether that be documenting your journey on Instagram, going on Twitter and getting active, replying to people's tweets, just jumping in into the community, whatever avenue you wanna go with. Marketing and traffic is going to be very huge and it's going to determine how much you can actually make from these different avenue pieces. For building the app or the software as a service, this is where I would actually pair blogging or you know YouTube or something to document the journey of this app. I think it would be a great way for you to get out of your comfort zone and start to document some things, but also get people interested, right? Like you're blogging, you're vlogging, whatever it is, you're documenting the journey of you building this app. Not only is this going to help you create more content, but it's also gonna help people kind of join in on that journey and see what it is you're doing and get behind you. They're gonna support you. They're going to say, hey, this guy, he knows what he's doing. This this thing is awesome. It sounds like it's gonna be a great product. I'm gonna sign up for this thing and do some pre-orders or I'm gonna sign up to his newsletter and I wanna know when this thing comes out. So that's why I would kind of pair a couple of these things in order for you to actually generate a bigger audience and get more traffic to some of the products that you're actually gonna make. So those are a couple ways for you to actually generate some side income or turn a passion into a full-time income as a developer, coder, programmer, whatever it is you wanna call yourselves. There's so many different titles, I just can't keep up and I don't wanna get into the arguments there, but those are some of the ways that you can start to generate some money, some income. Hopefully that was helpful for you. Hopefully that can spark some ideas and motivate you to get moving in that direction because right now I know unemployment's getting high. You know, some people are getting furloughed, losing their jobs, or people want to generate more money off on the side because they're not making as much or they're spending so much time at home. They just, they want to occupy themselves with more side projects and things like that. So, you know, what more incentive to make more money on the side as a side project, right? So the, hopefully those ways can kind of spark some ideas in your head and get you moving. But if you guys enjoyed this video, hit that like button, hit subscribe. If you have any questions that you want to ask me, hit me down in the comments. But I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.